Well, hello, friends, and uh, welcome to the Serenity OS update for November 2019. Now, before we begin, let me tell you about sponsorship real quick. So the Serenity operating system and all my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe even one day make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options. Uh, I'm on Patreon under the name Serenity OS. I'm in the GitHub Sponsors program um, under the name AwesomeCling. And then for those of you who prefer to make a one-time contribution, I'm on PayPal, also under the name AwesomeCling. Now, you can find links to all of these uh, in the video description below. So if you're interested, check that out. And of course, as always, a huge, huge thank you to those of you who are already supporting me uh, in some way. Now, we have over... 70 active unique supporters at the moment, which is just mind-blowing. So thank you all um, All right, so about November uh, It's been a very active month now. I've merged code from 25 contributors other than myself this month, which is just so cool and I really like opening up github and just finding these pull requests um, to surprise me with with new features and bug fixes and all kinds of goodies and so, like, just a biggest thank you to everyone who's been writing code for Serenity. Um, now, unlike last month, when I focused on two months, uh, two apps almost the whole time, um, this month has been more of a mixed bag. So the first thing that you'll notice here is that the um, launcher is gone, and instead we now have the apps up here in the uh, system menu. And this stuff is actually populated automatically using uh, little app files in res apps. So we find these .af files here, and we can look at one of those. You can see it's just a typical INI file. Very, very handy, very editable. And uh, yeah, so that's that. And um, of course, uh, just because I didn't focus on uh, the big apps doesn't mean that I didn't work on them. So let me show you some stuff in Hack Studio. So this is actually the little program for the um, window I'm currently in. Um, so there's a bunch of new stuff in text editing. For instance, we have uh, undo and redo. Uh, oops. And uh, we can go backwards and forwards like that. And this is something that was implemented originally by Rin. So thank you, Rin, so much for uh, starting on this. It's a really awesome feature. And then we have curly matching, which is when you put the cursor on a curly brace or in a parenthesis or even on brackets, then it will highlight the um, corresponding matching bracket. And of course we can undo uh, all that. Um, although there was a little bit of weirdness there. Yeah, <laughs> it has bugs, but um, these are bugs that we can fix. And then um, I also added uh, shift delete to delete a whole line at a time, very handy. Um, and then Caleb made a feature to sort all the selected lines by pressing Alt-Shift-S. It's a very, very handy feature. Um, and, oh yeah, and another thing is that we can now add more text editors with um, these handy keybinds. So very nice if you want to edit the same file in multiple editors, for instance. Hello there. Um, Okay, so that's the editing features in Hack Studio so far. Now we also uh, started working on a GUI builder here. This is to replace the Visual Builder standalone application. Uh, and it's still lagging behind in features, but it does have some stuff that Visual Builder doesn't have, like it shows you the um, widget tree here. And you can actually um, select multiple of these. Oopsie doopsie. Um, and the selection is highlighted over here as well. And notice also that we can now select multiple uh, elements in a widget, uh, in a tree widget, tree view, which is pretty cool. So, you know, there's a lot more stuff to do here, but uh, I have a good feeling about it. Um, okay, so what else? I guess we can look at the browser. So doing a whole bunch of stuff on the browser. If you've been following the channel, then you know that. Um, one thing that's do is we have a DOM tree inspector, so we can bring up this little thing where we can explore the DOM and we can see by um, selecting DOM nodes here, we can um, see where they are in the tree, I mean in the in the HTML view, 
and obviously there's a lot more that can be done with this feature, but it's a start. Um, now it's permanently highlighted, I guess. We'll just reload. And then we have a view source option where we can bring up the source code. And for local files, it actually brings up the actual um, local file so you can edit it, uh, foobar, and uh, refresh here. So it's very handy for testing. Um, and then of course, I've done all kinds of work on the different features. So now we have basic form elements um, and we have, um, I spent some time doing border drawing. So now this is this um, <laughs> Uh, very nice, uh, different sized border on each side. It actually looks basically correct. Um, of course, I don't know why you would want to do that, but at least now we can render it. Um, and what else? I mean, this just so much with the browser. Um, I did various new types of selectors, um, and we had gzip compression support um, that someone contributed. Oh, I don't remember right now who it was, but thank you so much for the gzip, um, HTTP gzip support, because that allows us to open websites that only send uh, gzip content, like this website right here, bettermotherfrickingwebsite.com, um, which previously did not load, because, you know, the compression. So it's really awesome. And then another thing is that actually networking now in the browser happens in a secondary process. So we have this thing called a protocol server, which does all the networking on your behalf. So um, protocol server is a new thing in the system that implements the HTTP protocol at the moment. And then the idea is to add more protocols to the protocol server, and then you'll have access to these protocols through a uh, simple API uh, that um, someone else will just take care of the loading for you. And this will be our path forward to implementing something like HTTPS, for instance, which we can then do out of process. Um, and, you know, there are many uh, good reasons to, to do out of process networking, not just the protocol pluggability like that, but also it will allow us to sandbox the browser much, much better. Um, but okay, so let's take a look at something else. Um, in System Monitor, if we bring that up, we can now see that, uh, let's sort by PID, we can see that Windows Server here, for instance, occurs multiple times, which is kind of interesting. And that is because we have multiple threads now that we show here. So if you look at this column, the TID column, we can see that all of these three right here actually are the Windows Server, and we see each individual thread and we can see how many syscalls each thread does, uh, how many page faults, and stuff like that. And if we go and look at, I don't know, let's look at something interesting, like System Monitor itself, perhaps. Oh, that one is a bit buggy. <laughs> okay, let's look at System Server. So we can see here that we now have proper C++ demangling of the whole call stack. Previously, we only had demangled kernel symbols, and then in user space, you would get these mangled names, but now we demangle the whole thing. So it's very, very nice for debugging. Um, okay, so I think that's everything in System Monitor. Now, um, I wanted to show you, I guess, Sound Player. We can look at Sound Player. So I don't have my sound on on my machine right now, apparently. But uh, this app got a super nice facelift um, that was done by Till. So thank you, Till, for this awesome new sound player. And uh, he added all kinds of cool features, like you can uh, seek and um, play and pause, and it shows you uh, remaining time, and I'm just really, really awesome new stuff. And I guess there are all kinds of little things also that I would like to show you. So. One thing is that, uh, I mean, this is kind of a silly little thing, but I really like it, which is that when you double click in the terminal, it selects the thing that you're clicking on. But when you triple click, it now selects the whole line. And that's a patch by Rock. So thank you, Rock. That's a really awesome <laughs> feature. I don't know why, I just really like it. Um, and I guess we can look a bit more in File Manager, actually. So if we want to look at some file here, say windowmanager.ini, then we now have a properties window, which was also implemented by Till. 
and we can edit the permissions here, make this file completely unavailable, Bloop. and we can see that it updates here um, when you apply, which, uh, I don't know, I just find that really neat. <laughs> um, and of course, this looks slightly inspired by some existing systems, but uh, in a very beautiful way, I would say. So, awesome work by Till. And if you didn't notice, by the way, we have a little thingy up here that shows uh, current system sound state, so mute or unmute. We can now mute and unmute the system audio, although it's actually my host machine now that's running this virtual machine. That one has the sound turned off, so can't really do anything about that from in here. Um, but what else? Mm. Oh yeah, 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 right. So now when you resize a window and you pull it upwards and to the left, previously this would look really janky and crappy. And now it's all smooth and pleasant. And this is work done by Sergey, um, where he made it so that we, when we're resizing like this, we take the image that we have and we place it at the um, optimal location for, for um, the smoothest appearance. So when we're resizing upwards and to the left, instead of uh, taking the image that we had and just putting it in the top left of the window, we now put it in the bottom right so that it, it sort of aligns with the direction of the resize. And it's a simple little trick, but it just makes the whole desktop feel so much better when you resize. It's just so slick and awesome. So thank you, Sergey, for doing that. Um, and then, of course, there's been a lot of stuff in the kernel this month. Um, one thing was that at the start of the month, I sort of felt that the system had become kind of unstable because I was neglecting stability for the whole month last month and just working on features and, and new apps. So I did spend a whole bunch of time um, rewriting a large part of the memory management in the kernel, and I spent a bunch of time on file system performance and caching and stuff like that. So it is a lot more stable now. And um, a bunch of people contributed patches towards that as well, which is really cool. And um, I've also incorporated some security mitigations that I snatched from OpenBSD this month, which honestly, it's, it's more for fun than for security at this point, because obviously the system is nowhere near mature enough to start um, worrying about those things hardcore. But um, we do now have um, this map stack opportunistic uh, validation of stack pointers that OpenBSD does. And I also did um, that we crash processes that try to do a syscall from writable memory. So those are two, two little things, but I thought they were really cool. And maybe they're not going to find security problems right now, but rather they would just find normal, regular bugs. So <laughs> if that happens, that's great too. Um, and another thing that I did recently is kernel modules. So now we can actually load um, stuff into the kernel at runtime. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so currently we don't have any modules loaded, but if we mod load something like mod test module, oh, we can see that we have loaded um, a 16 kilobyte module into the kernel. And uh, we can see here that it did indeed boot up because it wrote a little message and uh, some other crap. And we can also unload it at uh, runtime. And we can see that it's being removed. This is coming from the test module itself. So this is really, really promising stuff because that means that we can start working on device drivers and stuff like that. And you can work on them inside Serenity and you can um, load and unload them from the kernel without having to reboot. So it's like drastically um, sp speeding up development of device drivers. So it's really sweet. Um, and what else? We have a bunch of new ports this month, actually, I should mention. Uh, we have um, NASM, the NetWide Assembler uh, by Pavo, and we have Nano, the GNU Nano Editor that was ported by Brandon, and we have the Python 3 language, I guess, ported by Emmanuel. I haven't tried it myself, but it's there in the tree. And uh, we also saw an open SSL port by Maxine. Uh, and of course, the, the, the biggest port, most noticeable port this month is the Quake port that Jesse did. 
at the start of the month, which is obviously super cool because now we have Quake and Serenity. Uh, I can't say that I ever <laughs> thought we would get to this point when I started this project, so that's pretty cool. Um, and I think this might crash the terminal when I close it. We'll see. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's okay because this is about everything that I wanted to show you anyway today. So thank you for tuning in and for keeping up to date with the project. And uh, welcome everyone to the new subscribers and um, lovely to have you here. Uh, so uh, if you ever want to chat, then you can find me and all the other Serenity OS uh, hackers in the Serenity OS channel on the Freenode IRC network. And there's always someone there. So just pop in and say hello. Uh, other than that, I'm just going to say thank you for hanging out and checking this out. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.